first thing, really important message to say is the vaccines in cancer patients are safe. And there is a discussion about whether or how effective they would be. We're not going to do any harm. We could do a lot of benefit by vaccinating these patients. Uh, and they are a very vulnerable group. I feel that both the mRNA and the adenoviral vector vaccines induce both humoral and cellular immunity, which might be a good thing, thinking about this uh, population of patients that is uh, often older or, or has comorbidities. Um, the data, that, the immunogenicity data, and also the, the efficacy data that we've seen on the older um, uh, trial participants is promising that it might also work in a slightly immunocompromised uh, population. We don't know the correlate of protection yet. So we it's hard for us to predict what type of uh, immunosuppressive therapy would actually um, impact the, the, the vaccine efficacy and, and the success. Cancer patients were not recruited into these studies. We can extrapolate data from other vaccine studies, specifically inactivated vaccines. And uh, from that data, it is pretty clear if your immune system is intact, you're not on active treatment, uh, you're a cancer survivor, you're cured, then you should be able to mount a good response. Um, however, those who are on active treatment that are immunosuppressive like chemotherapy, um, or those who are on immunotherapy, which is a big question mark, uh, we don't really know specifically to this vaccine how they respond. That obviously depends on the type of treatment. So if you have an immunosuppressive uh, treatment, then you, and which interferes with T or B cells, and, and the, then you uh, may have interference with the immune response to coronavirus and, and the in, immune response after vaccination. So again, this is something that we have to observe and we have to observe closely and, and to decide whether uh, really uh, the, the cancer patients uh, lose their protective immunity more rapidly than the rest of the population. All patients under chemo, under IO, under hormonal therapy, under targeted therapy should be vaccinated. Some of my colleagues would say if you can avoid to give the vaccine the, the, the day of a high dose of steroids, it might be preferable. But even if you have to do that, do that. And that's my main message. I mean, at the time being, we shouldn't compromise this protection. I mean, common sense dictates that starting as far before or away from immunosuppressive treatment as possible makes a great deal of sense. If you've got patients who are on cycle number five of six and they've got three more weeks to go, why not wait till that's finished and then, but the data or the T cell data suggests actually the immunosuppressive chemo effects of chemotherapy don't go away one or two weeks after they're complete. It takes much longer than that. So I don't see the logic in waiting three weeks after chemotherapy to vaccinate. I would put it to you in a different way. I would say you've got to come up with a strong reason why you wouldn't want to vaccinate the person in front of you right now. Mm -hmm.